Hey everyone, and welcome to uh, another episode of Minecraft Mondays. I'm Rob, and uh, we're returning back with uh, Cact and End of the Earth to continue our tour of Epcot on the mcmagic.us server, which is this massive Minecraft server that is completely recreating Walt Disney World one piece at a time. We're here in Epcot, we took a look at some other rides last week, and now we're going to be taking a look at some more and a little bit behind the scenes. So uh, let's start off with... We're here at Journey into Imagination, the Imagination Pavilion. So let's let's head on in. Yep. Awesome. So uh, since the last time that you've been in here, we've actually gone back through it and added command blocks that contain the dialogue, so that you know what's going on and you're not staring at a bunch of blocks just weirdly placed. Yeah, I should also mention that in some of my past videos, I turned off the HUD for, I guess, the privacy of, of people in the server. But there are actually, and, and it's on now, so you should see it, but there are actually, there's text for, like, all these rides with narr narration. It just adds to sort of the authenticity. So I'm going to press for the cart here, and ooh, it's like a, it's a chain. All right, and we're off. Have you guys considered a, uh, a recreation of the Fast Pass system? Um... We had, there was ideas about it. Uh, if you go to the Fast Pass dispensers of some rides, we have written books that say like Fast Pass Return to come between this time and this time. Interesting. It didn't really catch on. People just like collect them and trade them with other guests, which is cool, but yeah. not the intended use of it. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting aspect of the server I've noticed. I spent like the past week or so on. Oh, and we're off again. Um, these signings, I see like people in chat going, so and so signing here. Uh, is that a thing that you guys uh, coordinate, or is this like purely fan driven? How? What is that? It's mostly fan driven. We allow the guests to put on whatever skins they want. And I said in the previous video that I was the king of tours, basically giving almost twenty tours a day. I also, because I ran the Flickr and Facebook page, I became the guy who knew all the meet and greets inside and out and i really mastered the art of that and turned it into the big event that it is now and similarly uh we look at each update uh very similarly to how we look at the plugin uh, that we get once every so often and when the book and quill came out we immediately taught autograph books and so the question then came up okay how do we get this into the park and I recalled that we had this little space in Emporium that would allow us to wire up uh, dispensers to go and spit them out. And from there, um, between activity by some of our cast members and just a number of guests going off and saying, uh, I want to sign myself as this, uh, it took off as sort of its own autograph system. And uh, it's been going really well ever since. And they can just get a book when they come on the server and have a ball with it. Awesome. So, I don't know if you have chat on, right? Because yep. uh, if you look, Buzz just logged in. This is uh, one of the accounts that we got recently, which we basically only use for the purposes of signing books and stuff, because it is a cool thing to do. Yeah. So we have a guy in a Buzz skin go around. and That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. That's $26 I've ever spent. So now this is, this is uh, compared to things like Test Track, this is a much slower ride. Uh, but yes. it's just like the real ride, I guess. It's it's a much slower sort of experience. Um, I'm gonna it's a slower, buzz off. Yeah, it's a slower, more intellectual experience that's mostly done through um, through again the dialogue of the characters, figments saying, uh, "Come on, Eric Idle, use your imagination," and uh, it wound up uh, very similar to the ride in Disney World being one that involved a lot of tech to get working. So again, um, test track for um, for as fun as it is, it's mostly figuring out how to use the train car signs and getting those to work. Whereas this one was figuring out how to get the redstone set up so that things move around, stop and go. And uh, as we mentioned in the last piece, we're going to take you down once you get to the end of it and show you how it all sort of fits together. Yeah. Where, where does, like, the line, where is it drawn between total accuracy and sort of, um, uh, sort of fantasy for the, uh, the, you know, being in Minecraft? For instance, you know, one of my favorite rides, Ellen's Energy Adventure, that's, 
That's, I like it. It is a 40 minute ride though. Is Would you, with this sort of technology, oh, here's some music, hold on. Oh wow, you had the little the journey into imagination there. Uh, sorry, uh, so like, would you make a 40 minute ride if to, to be accurate or is it sort of, do you play around with that to make it more of an enjoyable like game experience? And well, had a similar problem with this when working on a uh, GMR, how he only had to fit in some of the dialogue, and you can take it from there if you want. Yeah, um, what we do is we try to fit in as much of it as possible. We recognize that we're going to be limited to a certain degree. Like, um, while you're riding through Journey into Imagination, the Figment animatronic is obviously less than one meter square. Right. So it's virtually impossible to create a detailed Figment. So instead we substitute it with the closest thing we can get in Minecraft. Sometimes uh, we'll try to distract you from that fact as we do in here by trying to get as much of the real ride in as possible. Other times we just say, we, uh, other times we just fess up to it, like uh, for the new version of Spaceship Earth uh, coming down, we have, if you go to the real park, there's a comment by Siemens at the bottom it says, and now we're going to take you to Project Tomorrow, which right. displays how uh, all these new cool future things will be. But we don't have the ability to go and do all these LCD screen things with the plugins we currently have. So instead, the command block says, and now Project Today, a bunch of facades that do absolutely nothing. <laughs> There's a, uh, a semi-interesting story behind uh, this image works. Uh, when it was originally built by a few of the CMs, uh, it was one of my first days on the server, actually. And so I saw them building it, and I was TP'd in here. And it, this was the first time I ever met End, and he was confused why a guest was in a very active redstone area. Because this is basically before they even had a floor uh, on here. So one of the main rules is not to have guests in redstone areas, which I basically was. Because I said I was helping these guys out. Because... The way that this room is laid out, it's so cluttered compared to what it used. It's there's just stuff absolutely everywhere. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing how like the red the redstone behind all of this works because you guys do a very good job of hiding it so that it just it just is the button there and it does stuff and how it. How it connects to that light up there is like completely hidden from the guest. Um, well, in that case, um, let me TP you down here and show you. Sure. Wow. So, we're currently standing right next to that finale scene that you saw for Journey to Imagination. So, if I go and hit this trigger button all the way up here, mm -hmm. then you'll notice it will cycle through uh, all the different pieces. You have your signal extender all the way over here on the right. That's what keeps the doors open. You have your command blocks over here. That's figment and chatting talking. You have your clocks for your short delays. And back here, uh, we have Skipper's uh, amazing creation, which plays the last few bars of one little spark. So, um, if I hit this button up here, you'll see. One water bucket and it's all gone. <laughs> this is amazing. And yeah, um, this isn't as common, but we've been increasingly finding cases where it's helpful to have delays and dialogue like what we had under here on Journey to Imagination. And so we were able to later on apply this to the bottom of GMR, and uh, it's soon going to be applied into making Catastrophe Canyon work. GMR being the great movie ride in Hollywood Studios. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of like NASA around here. After a while, we call everything by acronyms. <laughs> That's also a big Disney thing, I've noticed. A lot of Disney fans, it's, you, can, you can shorten pretty much anything. How long would uh, a ride, like, how long did this ride take, for instance? Not in terms of, I guess, building the 
the building around it, but just sort of doing red redstone work. Um, I'd argue that each ride that we built here goes up in phases. Uh, first phase is just general exterior, so the walls around here. I think that took maybe uh, three or four days because it, this one feeds directly into Captain EO slash uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience over to the left. And there were a number of angles involved in that, so that was part one. Part two were the interior walls for the ride and the position of the ride track. That was another two days uh, detailing for the set. That was, uh, I think, another three or four days. And finally, the redstone itself took the better part of the week to get working. And uh, then it took uh, another one day on top of that to go and uh, insert the command blocks with the dialogue. So for complex rides, it can take uh, three weeks to a month. For simple rides, or for rides that get a lot of attention, it could be done in as little as a week. Wow. And, and this is all built typically off the server, so is it, it's as simple as just sort of, I mean, uh, symbolically flipping a switch and then it goes from the ride not being there to there? Yeah. Well, now it is. It used to be everything was built on the main server. Now everything is built on the build server. Uh, so what we used to do, which is, which is now going to be a lot more rare, would be uh, the second we finished a ride, we'd set up a small little opening ceremony. We'd try and get as many guests on as possible, then we'd open up the ride. And also, uh, back when we were building everything on main, we'd also have these moments where uh, we'd stick a glass box up uh over one of the rides so that the guests could see it being built as it was done. And um, there's still a number of locations where the glass boxes still exist. You might have seen one down there, Journey into Imagination. Yeah. And uh, later on, if we show you the inside of GMR, you'll probably see one up there as well. Cool. Okay, so you want to see uh, Captain EO now? Yes, let's take a look at Captain EO. And while we're headed there... I'll briefly explain Captain EO. Captain EO was a ride from uh, late 80s with Michael Jackson. It was it was like a, wasn't it like a 3D? It was like a movie. I don't know if it was 3D. Yeah. That is, uh, George Lucas was involved. Francis Ford Coppola was involved. Michael Jackson was in it. It got closed down, but then uh, after, just because of, you know, over time. And then after the passing of Michael Jackson, they brought it back. And it's currently there, right? Yeah. Here, I'll give you a little preview of the show. Oh, here we are. This is actually my first time seeing Captain EO in both real life and in Minecraft. So do you guys... I'm going to hold off. Ta-da. <laughs> I have no idea how to run it, actually. <laughs> So it's it's is it a show you guys put on occasionally? It's one of the ones that uh, you mentioned earlier in an earlier video. Yeah, it goes on every now and then. Yeah, um, depending on the popularity of the show, there's more or less choreography. Um, depending on the complexity, I know that this one we've in the past have like drop down screens or uh, seats moving, depending on how many people we have there. Yeah. And uh, things that are more complex and more popular, like Phantasmic, they have planned choreography and yeah. significantly more complexity in switches. And, uh, and yeah. Uh, I, uh, I remember back when I first joined, it was choreographed, but no longer, because everybody just kind of gave up. It wasn't very popular. I, I, I get the feeling, I mean, in terms of the real Captain EO, that it's there because they don't have anything to put there yet. I'd enjoy Shrun uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience again. Yeah, that was that was pretty fun. Not a, not exactly culturally relevant today, but um, certainly more so than I don't know. Like Captain the, EO in yeah. uh, space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so where where are we off to now? Uh, Soren, if I'm not cor if I'm correct. Soren at yeah. the Land Pavilion, which is just up that way. Arguably the most popular ride at Epcot right now, currently. Would you say the same for uh, my, your your Epcot? Is it the most popular? No, uh, because of Test Tracks. Oh, that's do. right. Yeah. 
It's Test Track's redo, and it's this weird thing. Um, because it's tucked away in such this odd location, because it's on the inside of a building, it's as if people have difficulty remembering that it's in here. Mm -hmm. And so once every so often, um, they'll be, we'll have guests looking for something to do, and we'll say, uh, by the way, uh, you could always try Soren, that's open. And then they'll go, oh my god, you have Soren? <laughs> and then everyone goes rushing off to go ride it. I also believe that you're the first guest to ride this since it was redone also. Correct, End? Yeah, um, parts of it might be faster, parts of it might be slower. And this is like, but, uh, um... This is like Mission Space, which we did, uh, in last week's video. This is a ride that, in real life, is typically on a screen that you watch. But in Minecraft, we'll be going through an actual, like, mine. Oh, that reminds me. I'll show you the screen. Oh, yeah. Whoa. So you take a... As you could tell, not a lot of effort was put into this. It's kind of here for show. That's awesome. And we're in the air. I recall there being, like, a month-long project to see if it was possible to both pick up the chairs and move them back. And <laughs> we decided uh, after a great deal of redstone and a huge amount of frustration that no, it wasn't worth it. And that, that partially led to the decision of, you know what, let's just do the movie. Well, and sure. this is what led to deciding to turn Mission Space and uh, Star Tours into that. I was going to say, for what it's worth, I, I like this this way of doing things. Hit the button, the cart will spawn. And we're going to be off again. So, yeah, Soren really quickly is a ride about hang gliding over, I guess, what is it, the southwestern part of the United States, yeah. Grand Canyon and California mm -hmm. and whatnot. And yeah, I'd say that's accurate. Yeah. And no, much to our dismay, we were not able to go and come up with a sense simulator plugin for Minecraft. <laughs> One day, maybe. What I think will that really, not today. what I think will really uh, sort of alter the experience of what you guys are building right now, and I, I can see um, these guys being the supporters of, of of this. But like, do you guys know the Oculus Rift? It's the, um, it's the. 3D virtual reality headset that was on Kickstarter and it got funded. It was, went way over funding because everyone wants one and uh, I think id Software uh, supports it now and they were just at CES and it's just it's a, it's very much like plug and play 3D virtual reality. You put on these like ski goggles and you're in the world and I could totally see Minecraft supporting it and I, I could just imagine a ride like this in virtual reality. That would be amazing. Yeah. I'd buy it. I want to. The developer kits go out, uh, I want to say, in March. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see it hit the market early next year. And then just anything would do. You just plug it like right into it. Instead of a monitor, it's your, your headset. That and um, it really highlights the ability of being able to use games like this as... Uh, navigating and even training tools uh, we've had people that have come onto our server uh, spent a fair amount of time just walking around getting themselves familiar with the different paths and then uh, going to the parks and claiming that they were actually having an easier time navigating the parks based off of just spending time walking around our server. Oh wow, that's really fascinating. I was actually about to ask something very, I was going to say uh, out of everyone who visits how many, do you, do you, what do you think the split is between people who are Disney fans who have been to Disney and are just like reliving it versus people who have never gotten the chance and are like finally getting to? Um, we get a mix of both and they're both fun to have on the server. It's cool to teach people about Disney and it's also cool to be able to have a conversation about Disney with guests that have been there. That and also, um, we do provide this opportunity for people that have never been to Disney before to either get a taste of what's going on, plan out what they're going to do, 
or um, we understand that nowadays the, the economy is tight for some people yeah. and uh, one of uh, our owners favorite stories is that um, I think it was a father of two pretty young kids who uh, had e either promised them that they were going to go to Disney World at some point or uh, was intending on taking them to Disney World at some point and the economy hit them so hard that year that uh, the price of going all the way down to Florida and staying at Disney World was impossible. But what he did have was enough money to get three Minecraft accounts. So um, he was able to take them here and uh, we did our best to try to make it entertaining. We realized that it's a hollow comparison to the real thing, but it was one of the few occasions where uh, we all got to know that we were making a difference in someone's lives and the ability that we were, the, the knowledge that we were able to go and bring the park to some people that otherwise wouldn't have been able to go. It was just really cool. Yeah, I, uh, I think it was Robot that gave them the tour of MK and he was uh, he was talking with the dad in private message and the kids just wanted to ride Buzz Lightyear a billion times over and he's like, oh my god, when are we going to move on? <laughs> that's really touching. That That's awesome. Um, that's really great. I mean, I, I think the server's really cool for just like reliving, you know, the magic as, as I feel like, you know, someone who maybe isn't a big Disney fan might think that's corny, but I, I think anybody who's been to Disney understands that, you know, that yeah. does exist. And, but stories like that sound are just fantastic. I, uh, I did an interview on the server, uh, radio show after the first their second showing of Phantasmic and people were asking me like what it's like being on the server and being a CM and I said we're not building a Minecraft server we're building a community of people and we're connecting those people kind of like what VMK did because we all really share uh, the love of Disney so it's great and VMK cool Virtual being... Magic Kingdom right it's a uh... yeah yep. it was an old that was a uh, old game so now we're on Living with the Land? Is, it, is yes. that his current name? Yeah. Living with the Land. Um, this one received command block narration, I think, two days ago. So once again, you're the first guest to see the new command block narration. Um, I think I mentioned uh, earlier that in some of our rides, we just admit it, this is Minecraft. So um, once you get to the outdoors bit of this particular ride, uh, I sort of improv it and gave a statement on how Minecraft isn't quite like real life, but it does teach us things that we can use in real life. Oh, that's awesome. I almost want to write it to hear that. But yeah, um, this was another substantially long pro project because we knew that um, it was just this large and we were dealing with a very long track and a lot of details and we caught a fair chunk of it I feel but um, at the same time um, there's parts of it that illustrate some of the problems that we try to deal with and uh, get around with our various plugins so uh, you're going to see part way down the ride there's a room with tons of pictures on the walls. Yep, we're in it, um, in it right now, actually. Just leaving it. Yeah, so we have this room with all these pictures on the walls, but our plugin doesn't quite defend those. So we've had cases in the past where we'll enter that room and all the pictures will be gone. Ooh. But um, the fact that we now have this system where we're working off of a different map, it allows us to go and replace the easier. And again, it's going to be another plug-in and plug-in update we'll be looking out for. And when it finally shows up, I'm sure we'll all be cheering. Mm -hmm. And the tour comes to an end, or the ride, I should say, comes to an end. Okay, uh, yeah. before we go to Illuminations, I want to show you something. Awesome. And, go over uh, here. While you're on the way over there, I'd like to reiterate those last few lines of living with the land that I threw in there. Uh, Minecraft does teach us a lot about resource management 
and uh, even if it's not the best farming simulator, uh, hopefully uh, younger folk like us will be able to take some of the lessons that we learn from these video games in terms of managing our resources carefully and hopefully put that into real life things like the real earth and the real land. Yep. Okay, so you just saw this area in living with the land. Correct. Uh, in real life, they have a tour that goes th through here. It's called the Behind the Seeds Tour. Um, there are some pumpkins over here, so in honor of your channel, I'm <laughs> going to make a private jerkfish that will forever <laughs> be in the land pavilion. That's so awesome. Let me pull out a sign. <laughs> there it is. I'm honored. Thank you, guys. Now I get to Our pleasure. I get to be part of Disney. So uh, where are we headed next? Uh, Illuminations, I guess. Illuminations. Now, Illuminations, if you're not familiar, is uh, the fireworks slash, I guess you could say light show, because you've got the, the, the globe involved that uh, goes on in Epcot uh, almost every night. I mean, I guess in certain seasons yeah. they tone it down, but for the most case, it's every night. All those barges you see out there, they all launch fireworks. Um, I'll see if I can hit off a number of them now. Oh, there we go. And again, um, just like all the rides where we look at them and try to figure out, okay, how can we do this? Um, with regards to the fireworks, we also looked at the... Um, what we had access to in terms of the new fireworks bits and said okay um how can we simulate say the fire barge for instance because if you tried spitting out fire charges you'd barely be able to see them at this distance they would look awful so we said okay how about an orange firework that gets stuck somewhere halfway and then explodes close to the water <laughs> just like that and um even though it all looks complicated when you're standing up there and observing it, it's actually not as hard as you'd think to operate. Let me see if I can teleport you down here to the control room. Cool. And uh, I, I've actually seen one of you, you, your shows of Illuminations, and when you guys do shows, you, you either stream, I guess, in Mumble or online the music that goes with it. Yeah. Oh, look at this. And... Um, you beyond just like throwing up fireworks it syncs up it's it's very impressive and so this is the control room we're in now yeah this is the control room you have uh instructions on how to run the show over on the right we have the opening spiel over in this corner and um again it's very intuitive so to set off any firework you pull a lever the light will go on and you'll be able to see out the front window as a firework goes off so, for instance, if you come over here to the far left to the fire barge, uh -huh. and you keep an eye out that window while you're flicking that switch, you might be able to see at far distance the um, the barge going off. Oh, all right, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the switch. Ready? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's awesome. There you go. And um, do I flip it back? Sure. Okay, I didn't. Here we go. Wanted to make sure. <laughs> it's fine. Um, as for how it all works, if you follow me down this hatch over here. Oh my goodness. And then uh, actually, if you look down through the floor. Oh, those are the. That's the. That's uh, the the globe. That's. Yes. That's right. So during the show itself, uh, while everyone else is standing upstairs watching the fireworks, we'll have a second cast member with world edit tools running down here, picking up the globe, uh, moving it offwards uh, while vanished to a certain distance, then using Movecraft to move it in front of everyone and then switch it out for the second one. Wow. And this is all the redstone for the fireworks that we were those switches we were we were flipping before, right? That's right. So, um, oh, each man. one of these different wires leads out to a different set of fireworks. And uh, you'll notice this 
weird ridge shape that we have running between each of the wires. One of the big concerns when we were uh, making this was we have a giant lagoon sitting over all of this. Yeah. And if so much as a single hole opened up there, then all this redstone would be gone. So these ridges help us in the event of a catastrophe uh, contain the water a little. Oh, that's clever. This is in this is incredible. Like you, this is still more organized than my test track. <laughs> so that's been a, like a really cool behind the scenes uh, look at Epcot here on the MCMagic.us server on Minecraft. Now this is one of three parks. They're working on a fourth park. These guys are working on hotels and. And just like all the other resort stuff, they do firework shows. It's it's incredible. I mean, these videos hopefully give you a good look at sort of what they're working on, but it it pales in comparison to actually joining the server and checking it out and seeing what they do because uh, I think there's enough content here to fill a million videos. Um, I want to thank both CAC901 and End of the Earth. Uh, thank you guys for giving me this awesome tour. Um, Anytime. I am going to take you up on that offer because... You know, Disney is known for being a park that's supposed to never end. The different theme parks are never supposed to be completed. That was like Walt's vision, was that things were always change and update. And you guys have already shown that as the parks change and update, your park changes and update. And uh, I certainly love covering these parks as both a Disney fan and a Minecraft fan. So I fully intend to revisit these one days, especially like World Showcase and just sort of have fun with it. And... I hope you all enjoyed these videos. I hope it was informative. I really hope you come check out the server. It's again, it's mcmagic.us. And uh, I hope to see you next week when we might be doing more of this with other parks or something else. We'll see. Come check it out. Every Monday I do a Minecraft Monday. Uh, have a great week, everyone. Bye, guys.